Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to a little agency therapy. We're jamming today. We're talking ClickUp systems. We're talking client management, what you guys need in order to essentially manage your clients at a high level, make sure you're not losing track of stuff and make sure the team knows exactly what they're doing throughout the day. So what are we hopping into today? Well, we got a lot of goodness going on on the ClickUp side. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for cl more ClickUp content. And so here it is. Step-by-step -step guide's gonna show you guys the exact formula, exact templates that we would utilize inside of our agency see uh and it's it's pretty solid it's pretty solid i'm not gonna lie okay so let's go ahead and hop in today well here's where we're gonna go we're gonna take five segments to client and campaign management i'm gonna show you guys exactly how to manage your projects and campaigns i'm gonna show you guys a little time tracking and estimation within clickup I'm gonna show you a little bit about team communication and collaboration the double the double C's, but communication and collaboration, resources and workflow management, and then a little bit of integration and reporting, things that you guys can implement relatively easy. So let's hop in. So where are we starting? Well, before we actually jump into those five steps, want to just quickly cover the hierarchy of ClickUp. Um, we didn't cover this last time. Uh, last time we kind of like laid out some like fundamentals of ClickUp, but we didn't specifically talk on this. ClickUp hierarchy. What does it look like exactly? Well, at the most large piece of ClickUp, we have our spaces, okay? Spaces are just what we navigate throughout, okay? Uh, and the space that we're gonna specifically talk about today is the active clients space, okay? From there, it goes into a folder. So it goes space, then folder, and then our list, then tasks, then subtasks. So this is kind of what it looks like. These are all spaces here. I kind of have them blurred out, okay? We got a little, little Kevin from the office on that space. The one that we're really gonna be focusing on today is going to be the active clients template client folder template, onboarding profile list, and then client notes, which are technically a list, but it's it's a document inside of inside of this folder. As you can tell here, okay, so the space, space level here is gonna be active, active client template. Okay? And you guys are gonna get this template at the end. Folder, client folder template, list, the onboarding list, okay, and also a profile list. And then inside of these lists, you're gonna have your tasks and then some subtasks. I don't have any subtasks in here, okay? But this is what our tasks and subtasks would look like. Something along these lines. You got people that you could assign it to. You got the due dates, priorities, time track, time estimate, all that good stuff, okay? That's the hierarchy. And I want you guys to understand that before we jump in. And the second thing I want to chat about is from our last stream. Remember, when we're building out our project management software, simplicity scales. There's going to be a lot of tools. There's going to be a lot of knickknacks. Uh, there's going to be a lot of automations and things that you can do. And just because you can do the things inside of your project management software doesn't mean that you should do them. So remember, simplicity scales, we're going to boil this down into the bare bone minimal so we can keep it simple. Kind of remember that as we're going through today, you don't need every feature. You don't need every single thing that ClickUp has to offer because they have a ton to offer. And honestly, a majority of it is pretty unnecessary to run an agency. Okay, so let's talk about project and campaign management. Where do we start first? Well, step number one, we got to create the space for all clients. And the way that we essentially can do this and what we should set up inside of our space is a couple different views as well. Okay, so when you guys go to set up this space, it's literally the first step. It's like the first thing you have to do when you sign up for a ClickUp account is you have to create a space. So this could be your first space that you create. Okay, and once you create your first space, then you can go into list, team, and workload okay these are different views and it's simply to add a new view you're just gonna hit this little plus sign and it's gonna allow you to add a new view and we'll circle back around a team and workload but i want you guys to add those workloads to your space and but these are the views that i want you to have because it's gonna be really important for us to manage the team and understand the workload that our team is managing have those views on your space because we're gonna wanna manage that across all of our clients. Okay, the second step here is creating a templated folder. And our templated folder looks something like this. So we have our client folder template. This is the folder view. Inside of that folder, we're going to drop two lists, an onboarding list and a profile list. And then our third one is going to be client notes. And I'll break each of those down here in just a second, but that that's what needs to go inside of our folder template. So when we create that folder template, remember, this is going to house your onboarding steps, your client profile, and any client notes that you have for them. Three things to manage one client, relatively simple, right? After that, you're going to create your onboarding list. This is the one piece of customization that you're probably gonna have to do inside of this template is what your onboarding process is. I, I did a, a pretty random one. I just threw together some steps that I felt sounded good inside of my head. Uh, but your onboarding steps might look some, uh, something like this, but it could also look 
like something completely different. So this is something that you'll actually have to customize. Uh, so you want that step-by-step -step onboarding inside of your onboarding list. Okay, so when you copy a new template over, you have a ready to go list that your team can follow in order to onboard your client appropriately. So you're gonna want that in here. And then eventually, I'll talk about this in a second, you can archive this list after it's finished. And then the columns that you're gonna wanna set up here, you're gonna wanna set up a little uh, assignee because someone needs to own the task of onboarding that client and it could be different people. You're gonna want due dates specifically around those. So you can set due dates of like, hey, we need to get this task done at this time. You can do priority. It's not necessary, especially if you have due dates and you're using due dates, you don't really need priority, right? Because your due dates are, are your priorities, right? Uh, but you can leave it in there. It, it's one of the automatic features. And then time estimate and time track. Okay, and we'll set the time estimates for this before we turn it into a template. Uh, I already put the time estimates in there, which you might have to change based on how long it actually takes you. Uh, and then the actual time track. And if you guys remember way back when, we did our pricing uh, on client projects. We know that time tracked is very important to figure out what we should be charging for our service and to check against our profitability. So you're going to want to utilize this. That's our onboarding list. Step number four in this is going to be creating a profile list. So creating this profile list, relatively simple. This profile is really meant for two things. One is going to be reporting, which we're going to go a little bit deeper on in our very last step, is going to be more of our ad hoc tasks. So ongoing management, things that we have to do throughout the week, month, throughout the year to make sure that we're managing a client appropriately. And guess what? All of our columns, they look exactly the same as our onboarding. We have someone that's assigned to it. We have a due date, we have a priority, we have a time estimate, and we have time tracked against it, okay? So same columns as your onboarding list, exact same thing, okay? And then if you guys are curious about statuses too, uh, we only use three statuses. We do to do, in progress, and then done or complete, okay? Those are the statuses that we use. And statuses are these little things right here. And this template will already have those statuses, so that's why I didn't point it out. But if you're like building this from scratch or you're wanting to build your own, those are the three statuses that we use. We don't use any other statuses outside of to do, in progress, and complete. Okay. So that's step number four. You need your profile list. And then step number five, we're going to create the client notes section. And I section this off into four specific notes. So like this one, uh, and so client notes can be broken into multiple sections. And these are going to be uh, pages within this document. And then you'll have some sub pages there as well. So some things that you'll notice that we have kind of in this left hand corner, we have like client assets. So inside of the client assets, you might have things like logos, creative assets, maybe their brand or, or uh, brand book or guidelines, brand guidelines, right? And these are going to be sub pages. And this is where you could populate all the information specifically on that client. The second one that we have here is going to be the meeting notes. So the meeting notes are specific to whenever you host a meeting, whether that's your onboarding meeting, some ongoing reporting meetings, right? Uh, just chatting with clients on a regular basis inside of a Slack channel. You're going to document any communication between the client and what actually needs to be done inside of the meeting notes. If you have a, like something like Fathom Note Taker or uh, maybe a Fireflies that comes with you to some of these meetings and records the meetings for you, those can generate summaries for you, AI summaries, and you can drop those in the meeting notes afterward, which is really nice because your team can then go back and see, this was our last point of contact, this is what we talked about, and then they can even watch the meeting back. And then lastly, campaign management. So if you guys are running like paid ads or, or uh, you know on Google, Facebook, anywhere like that, any changes that you make to that campaign should be tracked inside of campaign management. So say you swap creatives. Awesome. Have your ad buyer say on this date, we swap creatives. Sweet. And then have them give a reason. That way you can keep track of any change that has happened inside of the account for the entire duration of the account. The reason that we do this is a couple of different ways. And I actually learned this from Eddie Malou from Foreign Media. If that client ever leaves you, you can actually export this document and say, look at, you know, these are all the different things that we did inside of your account. And it'll actually show them. And no ad agency does this, by the way. Uh, you guys will be one of the few that will actually be able to export every change that you ever made inside of their account and show them how much you actually worked on their account. And then that way they can be set up for success because they don't know what was going on inside of the account. Set them up for success. Chances are you might win that client back down the road because you exited on a really good term. And then also say your media buyer drops for some reason, right? You have to fire your media buyer, they quit, they go somewhere else. Now you've got all the notes for a media buyer that has to fill their spot in order to pick up where they left off. It also allows us to have plenty of notes in and to understand where that media buyer left off. So campaign management, that's gonna be our third one. And then you can have sub pages in each of these, uh, which I would highly recommend. Step number two, time tracking and estimations. Guys, I can't explain this enough and I can't 
tell you the importance of actually tracking time inside of your agency to figure out one, if clients are even profitable, you could find out that you're spending a ton of time on one specific client and that client just simply isn't profitable. Also, it's going to just verify that your projects in general are going to be profitable and it's going to give you real time evidence of if your pricing is on the right track or not. Because here's the one thing that people always do. I literally talked to someone the other day and I asked them, how are you pricing? And they said, well, this is just, you know, I'm just taking like the market average. This is what my competitors do. When you compete on price against your competitors, it's a race to the bottom every time. You're just going to be outquoted on price at that point. But if we understand our profit margins and exactly how we should be pricing, because we know how much time and labor it takes in order for us to fulfill for a client, then we can price based off of what it takes for us to fill versus what the competitors are doing because your operating expenses may be more expensive than their operating expenses. And if that's the case, then what they're charging isn't what you should be charging. So let's not base it just based off chance and luck. We should do that based off of what the numbers and the data actually tells us to price at. Time estimates, track time, okay? You can do that, two simple columns here, time estimates and time track. So that way you can actually compare against what you feel like the estimate is for that project. So say you're a creative agency like Caleb Alvarez, for example. Okay, so Caleb has a creative agency. Maybe a reel for one of his clients takes four hours to edit. That's our estimate. Maybe on reels, our our team is doing five hours, right? We're going an, over, uh, an hour over that time estimate. And so when we go over that hour time estimate, well, we have to reflect on that. We have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. One, can we get more efficient? Why did it take us five hours when we feel like it should take us four? Or maybe our estimates are completely off. And it's like, hey, we squeezed the juice out of this and it actually takes us five hours to make a reel. Well, one, you need to adjust your price points according to that. And then two, you need to understand that, hey, we can only get you know one reel done really in a day and maybe another one right? Because we only work, you know, our team probably works eight hours a day. Okay. So it gives you the insights that you need in order to one price accordingly, but also to understand how many projects you can get done. This is when you can start to get into things like actually scaling your agency appropriately, knowing when to bring on team and knowing how many billable hours they're actually working and what capacity that they actually have to bring on more work. Okay. So once again, we don't have to guess at hiring anymore. If we just do this little thing called time tracking, I know it's annoying, but it works and it's gonna make you a more predictable agency if you do it. Let's move to number two, automations. Everybody loves a good automation inside a ClickUp. I, I love a good automation, especially when it works well. Struggle with time tracking, no big deal. When you hit a, a little, uh, this little button here, which starts your timer, you can set up an automation that will move this in, into a task that's in progress. That way you can see real time what your team is working on when they click that timer. Now, the key here is they have to actually click the timer. If they don't click the timer, <laughs> this, this is a useless automation to have. Okay, so they actually have to click the timer. So get them in the habit of, hey, click the timer. It'll move it into progress for you. And then you can see what the team is working on in real time, which is kind of nice. And then when they move that task to completed, uh, that, that little timer can be shut off. So that's an automation that you should include. If you haven't, let's move into step number three, which is going to be automations too, apparently. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm, I'm just showing you the automation in this one. Okay, so this is what the automations tab looks like. So if you click this little button up here, automate. And then we come down here. This is what pops up. And this automation is relatively simple. So once again, if you want to set it up manual, this is the first piece here. So when time is tracked, this is what happens. This uh, the status changes okay, to in progress. That way you can see, once again, real time, what the team is working on, which is kind of nice. And then from there, time tracking, the last little piece here. So this is what happens when you trigger that automation. Your task goes into in progress. And then when, when you start tracking that time. And then you just push stop uh when when you're done on that task okay so this one i had a time estimate of 20 minutes and i was 12 seconds in i wasn't actually working on anything there by the way uh i was just using it as an example okay so that's time tracking and automations relatively simple and i'm going to show you guys the workload feature here in just a second and how we're going to start utilizing this to go a little bit more in depth on being able to, to track time and allocate allocate to our team work and making sure they're not going over capacity and making sure that they're not under capacity love some time tracking everyone loves some time tracking who does it usually our employees don't but that's okay team communication and collaboration number three here okay step number one project communication no 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 when we're running projects we don't communicate projects inside of Slack. It's just the biggest no-no when it comes to uh, working inside of a project management software is that you update someone in Slack. Okay, it doesn't work very well. You're just gonna end up communicating something in Slack. Slack is a running feed, consistently going up and up and up, and it's gonna you're gonna lose track of it. You can't hold people accountable to it. Uh, we have a rule 
in, in our uh, consultancy and in our agency. If it happens in Slack, it doesn't count, all right? So make sure you can keep your team accountable. Make sure you communicate inside of your project management software. So how do we do that exactly? Well, there's a couple of different ways that we can do it. The first one is actual project communication. So on this one here, so if we clicked on the retrieve account access task, it's going to open up this nice little menu and there's some things that you can do inside of here. You can add some subtasks if needed. So say that that's a multi-step process or a multi-step system that's needed, okay, to retrieve account access. Well, we can lay that out for them of like, hey, this is what you need to do step by step. And that's what we use subtasks for. So we add the subtask as needed inside of here and we can have a step by step guide for our team on how to retrieve account access. And or maybe you have another step that you want to flush out. We could do that inside of subtasks. And then over on the sidebar here, the most underutilized piece of ClickUp is going to be communicating on the project inside of your comment section. Crazy, I know. We can specifically comment on this in just things like checking on our timeline here. And we can comment specifically on the project so we can, one once again, keep people accountable to it. But also, it happens inside the project, not somewhere randomly in Slack. So start communicating inside your project management software. You're going to save yourself one, a bunch of headaches, but also you're going to be able to keep your team accountable a lot better inside of ClickUp than you will in Slack because you're going to have to go find that somewhere. Sometimes they don't see it in Slack or there's a lot of messages, but if they're working on this project, they can see that someone commented and they'll get notifications that someone commented. And so they can come in here and check what that comment was. And you guys can have conversations in here. Slack, don't don't use Slack for project communication. Use Slack for just quick comms. If you need something fast, then hit them up in Slack. But if it's something where you're just like checking on timelines or things like that, that's going to happen inside of our project management software. All right, step number three, you can also do a folder chat. So say you're wanting to chat with the team specifically on a client, not on a specific task, but like as a project as a whole so like you know you're wanting to, to keep people in the loop on things well you can add a view at the folder level of a chat okay you have a chat feature on the client level as a whole and what does that kind of look like here well it looks kind of like this when you add this view in uh you can add in comments and and all the cool things that you want to add in there okay attachments whatever it is imagine that this client folder template was one of your clients okay we have a list view i added a gantt chart view in there as well i'm not going to go into to, into that today but basically it's like a timeline view a gantt chart is like a timeline view uh so you could see all the capacity for the team or uh know exactly what's happening uh, in a certain timeline for that client. So really good for creative agencies. If you guys run a creative agency, I would start playing around with the Gantt chart view. It's very helpful, you know, organizing and planning out content. And then this chat view, you can also utilize that at the folder level, which is very helpful. All right, number four, resource and workflow management. Step number uno, we can archive onboarding when it's complete. One of the things that we should do is like, if it's not useful anymore, we just get rid of it, right? So we can take this onboarding list and there's like a little hamburger menu uh, that looks like this right next to it when you hover over it. And then we can archive it, right? Just get it out of there. You don't need it. Once the onboarding steps are done, just archive the list. All right, step number two, profile. This is the one I wanna dive a little bit deeper on. So the profile is actually super important for us. This is where we do like ad hoc tasks. So anything that is related to the client, things that we need to get accomplished, things that we actually need to keep the team accountable for, once again, it doesn't happen in Slack. It happens inside of our project management software. And sometimes we have like some weird ongoing management tasks or ad hoc tasks for that specific client that we need to keep track of. And so we keep track of that through this view here, okay? And that's our second list in that folder, which is gonna be profile. Now, inside of profile as well, we'll talk about this in a second. We're gonna talk about some integrations and reporting that we can utilize inside of the profile, but this is where ad hoc tasks go. So any like one-off tasks that you guys have, we're gonna put it specifically in this profile. And then number five here, integrations and reporting. This is the last piece that I really wanted to cover is embed your reporting. Uh, you can add a view specifically into your profile and you can embed that view inside of the profile. So now you're managing everything from your reporting to your communication to all the tasks you need to get done for your client all in one spot instead of it being all over the place. So embed your third party reporting inside of here. And then that way you don't have to go back and forth. You can manage all of your clients inside of ClickUp without ever leaving the app. Pretty dope, I know. Okay, so that's it. 